So we're here today with Dr. Alex Carlin. She's a physical therapist at Aspire Physical Therapy in La Cañada, California. Uh, Alex, could you tell us a little bit about your physical therapy background and, and how you got to where you are today? So I went to Loyola Marymount University for undergrad. I got my bachelor's of science in natural science with an emphasis in pre-physical therapy. And then I went to USC and got my doctorate in physical therapy. Very good. And then how long have you been treating at Aspire now? I have been treating at Aspire for three years now, but I've been practicing for nine. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the patient population that you see there? Yeah, so we're in an outpatient orthopedic facility, and we see a very active population. Um, we see patients from seven-year-olds all the way up to 90-year-olds. So we see a pretty wide range in terms of the age group. Um, however, I would say our bulk is definitely in the high school area to kind of the 20 to 50s range. A lot of weekend warriors, um, a lot of people who, especially in the pandemic, work at their desk a lot and are working from home. Uh, but we, we definitely have a wide variety of even injuries and um, different types of patients. But I would just say we're overall a lot more active than uh, most yeah. yeah. And then you mentioned uh, with COVID, probably everyone's sitting at their desk. Uh, did you see some neck pain related issues as a result of that? Definitely. I would say that neck and back are one of the major things that we saw come out of this pandemic and a lot of people working from home and either not having proper desk setups, um, working a lot more hours. I heard that from a lot of patients, but definitely a huge, a huge contributing factor. It's kind of funny <laughs> when you think about the timing when the, uh, when your next level device arrived to the clinic and how that coincided with, you know, just after COVID hit. Uh, can you speak a little bit about how that ended up being helpful for you in the last couple of months? The next level? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So I was at first, um, one of my fellow colleagues who's working here, his name is Brett, um, he brought that in and I looked at it and I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Like in my head thinking it's some slide board, but how am I going to be able to use it? And he gave us the in-service on it. And instantly when I just tried it myself, I mean, I did maybe two repetitions and instantly I went, oh my gosh, the activation I felt in my muscles and the amount of range of motion I could, cause I have a lot of neck issues myself, but the amount of range of motion I had comfortably was amazing just to see it off of a couple repetitions. So then I started to play around with it. Um, I tend to give my patients lots of banded exercises or manual resistance with my own hands. And so I just started to play with it, using it with them. I had patients instantly get better. Ones I had been treating for a long time within one visit, see marked improvement. So it was something that really tremendously helped me in here. That's pretty great. To hear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can you speak a little bit about the exercises that you do with your patients on it? And if you have some kind of flow that you'll put them through normally? Yeah. So typically it depends. This is, um, probably the answer that every PT gives, it depends. Um, it definitely depends on the type of patient, but, and where they're lacking, whether it's with rotation, whether it's with side bend, whether there's someone who has a lot of range of motion and they just need stabilization, or if it's someone who has limited mobility and then I need to improve with mobilization as well as strengthening. Um, but I would say typically I like to start them on some type of a warm up, just like I would with any other body part extremity. So a light active range of motion, usually without any resistance, if they can control it properly and just get them warming up into any range of motion, side bend. And then I like to go and like to add a little resistance and go through it concentrically. Or sometimes if um, they can't control that as well, then I'll go into an isometric first and then into concentric. And then I like a lot of eccentric loading as well with it too. So I guess it's tough to say like every single person, if I have a specific 
program or one I go through because it does vary per patient, but I usually like to do a warm up on it. And then I go into whatever I feel like they need the most. And sometimes I only do one type of range of motion. And then sometimes I go through all of them. I usually do a warm up and then kind of get into the nitty gritty of what I feel like they need on it. Sure. What did you hear from so. the, um, the, the patients after they tried it out? And I guess have been using it for a couple of sessions. What kind of feedback do you hear from them? I hear from them that it's easy to use, that they feel supported and they can feel an effective strengthening exercise for their neck without getting compensation from other places. I mean, they probably don't use the words compensation, but just that they feel like they were able to work their neck muscles and not feel like they were using things that they shouldn't be using basically. Um, and just that it was easy, they felt supportive and it felt effective. So um, you mentioned that you like you would wrap the resistance bands around patient's head and that type of those type of exercises. Uh, do you feel like th this device kind of fills a hole for us as, as physical therapists for, for neck strengthening exercises? I completely do. And I even feel like it takes what I was doing <laughs> for lack of a better word, phrase to the next level, but it really does. It's, I know, I know pun intended, I didn't mean to say that, but it's true. It, you know, I've used the bands around the heads and doing isometrics myself. I use my hands a lot, which is great, but sometimes when you have limited time, it's really difficult because you need to be present for that. So it does allow, even though sometimes I do like to be present for it, um, if it's someone who I've gotten used to it and I know they can control it really well, I can take a step away from it. But I, I feel like that's an area that we have really been lacking in is stabilization for the neck. We go and we do everything for the lower extremity, for the back, for core. We have so many great core strengthening exercises. You know, we're taught to get somebody moving, get circulation, get them warmed up, give them some more mobility. And then we go and strength the, strengthen or stabilize within that range of motion. And so what do we do? We go work on the neck, this very, at times, unstable part of the body. You have this giant bowling ball on top of <laughs> a very tiny structure and we give someone more mobility. And if they're not used to it, how are they supposed to support themselves? So sometimes I've worked on people and then they come back and Sometimes they've got more pain because they weren't able to get the right muscles um, working. Even chin tucks, I've given chin tucks a million times and I've never felt it be more effective um, because I feel like they're actually activating the right muscles. They're getting less compensation from the ones that I don't want them using. And then I can have them do it even in it from an endurance standpoint. I can have them do it for minutes. Um, and I feel like it just is something that we haven't seen before in the PT world. So I'm very thankful for it. And I think it has filled a void here. So um, just, to, just so I can clear it up, did you, did you do chin tucks on the next level device? And have you just kind of transitioned them to that, that device as opposed to the pillow? Pretty much. Yeah. So I, yeah. So basically in, I would prop them up on the next level device and have them use that for chin tucks instead of having them on the pillow and doing chin tucks or even having them flat surface and doing chin tucks. Gotcha. Gotcha. Ooh, can you tell the story of Anna? Yeah. So I have a patient who I've been seeing for over a year now. There are definitely different body parts and cases that I've been working on, but one of the biggest ones was her neck pain. She had a traumatic fall onto her head uh, as a cheerleader when she was in high school. She's in her mid twenties now. And for her, she's very unstable. So she's got a very long, thin framed neck. She has the range of motion, but she can't control it. And obviously after a traumatic event like that, and we see this with any type of injury, how the muscles start to shut down and then we don't activate them. She has a lot of atrophy and deactivation of paraspinals, of deep neck flexors, of even suboccipitals. So many muscles, especially on the one side where she has the fracture specifically, she's 
become very weak and deconditioned there. But she looks really strong. She's able to compensate. She's someone who, if I had her do a plank, she'd be able to muscle through it. But she's compensating with all these different ones, these big movers that she's used for so long now. So I basically, and with range of motion, she can do the range of motion, but then she just felt immense pain. And she wasn't able to run or jump. A 20 something in shape female should not have those limitations. She should be able to do sports and activities that she wants to be able to do. And so it was really difficult for me to be able to see change immediately in the clinic when I worked with her, but just not see it long-term, not feel like it lasted from you know, week to week. And then every time she would even go and try something on her own, there'd be something that flared up, something in her neck or some symptom. And she was one of the ones that I put on pretty immediately, just giving her that neuro re-education to her muscles. Instantly, her range of motion improved, which she had the range of motion, but her active range of motion improved because she was able to control it. And I would say within a few weeks of using it, she was able to do some light jumping exercises in a workout class and felt zero pain. I mean, that's, that's amazing. That is amazing. Now, what do you think it was about the next level compared to the other neck exercises that we had to do prior? I think it's easier to isolate the specific structures, muscular stru structures in the neck on the next level. I think you can't cheat with it. Yeah. Even, I guess, manual resistance would be my next one to that. But the thing is, is if I've got my hands on somebody and I'm having them resist me in certain directions and I'm maybe I'm having them against gravity, with gravity, across gravity. But for me, I can only do it kind of for so long. This really allows it to be a formative, a formative exercise, piece of equipment that they can go and have endurance with. I think that might be even the key is that endurance component. Okay. Now, so I recommend the, the next level device to other orthopedic outpatient clinics similar to your guys at, at Aspire? 100%. Yeah. I, I oh, almost don't because I feel like it's a secret weapon we have now, but <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I think every... I think, yeah, I'd recommend it to every single facility similar to mine. And I even think it would benefit from potentially other facilities that aren't even necessarily outpatient ortho, but even, you know, neuro reeducation. And we see concussion that's been a big um, topic, especially over the past few years. And we've been more prevalent with uh, patients that we treat of that population. And that's a huge component as well. Um, so if we can, get that activation and we can get the strengthening there and the proprioception, then the world is your oyster. <laughs> you can get them better, do anything. Oh so, yeah. Uh, I think the most important question of all, have you treated your own neck pain with the next level device or what? Yeah. Yeah, I have. And I feel, and I've been feeling so much better. Um, I, I literally, cause for me, I'm similar to my patient that I was describing earlier where I, I lack stabilization and it feels good when you get a massage but that's not long term it's not permanent and so by using it I mean I can go on and instantly it's like oh I feel so much better I don't have that tension in the upper thoracic spine or I don't have the pinching in the base of my skull so yeah I have <laughs> Very good. Now, is, uh, are the other physical therapists at your clinic using it as well? And um, what, what, what kind of changes did you see as this came into the clinic? Definitely. I think once we all learned how to use the device properly and felt comfortable with ourselves using it, then, I mean, we we use it all the time. I, f I find people coming up to me going, do you know where the next level device is? Do you know where the next level device is? Because we have rooms here and we have this outdoor clinic. And so we sometimes it might be in a room because we've just used it. So everyone's kind of looking for it. And I think just the prevalence of it says a lot. And um, even 
some people haven't felt comfortable saying, hey, can you come over and just take a look at me when I use it? I want to try it on this patient. Or we talk about cases and when it comes up in discussion, oh, we should try the next level on them. I think that speaks for itself. Yeah, very good. Yeah, now, very some good. people not in California. Did you just say that you have an outdoor clinic? No, I'm sorry. I meant, I wish we had an outdoor clinic. We do have one location that does have garage doors. So it basically nice. feels like an outdoor clinic. That's not this one. We have very beautiful views and our doors stay open most of the time. Uh, so we get the nice Southern California breeze in here, but no, we don't, it's not outdoor. <laughs>